Hey, what's up everyone? Hippo TC here. And in this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know for Sea of Thieves Safer Seas. I'm gonna take you from the very beginning, from getting your pirate created to setting sail on the maiden voyage and even jumping over to your first experience on Safer Seas. Recently, Sea of Thieves released this new game mode, a way for you to play without the threat of PVP. Now, I know that's not for everyone. If you enjoy the shared world experience, you can jump right into the high seas and set sail on your adventure in a shared world. But if you're out there and you're wanting more of a chill experience Experience without the threat of PvP, maybe set sail with your friends, your kids, whatever the case might be. This uh, this video is going to be for you. I want to take you through from start to finish in kind of a different kind of way. In the past, I would make guides. Uh, I don't know. I would just make them a little bit different. But I wanted to make a video where I'm just taking you through the experience from a creator. I've been playing this game from the very beginning. I'm a day one player, so I have a lot of experience in this game. But the biggest thing I always think about in the back of my mind is this game, Sea of Thieves, is a lot of fun, and it is the best game out there for your pirate fantasy adventure. It's very fun, very thematic, and I'm excited that Safe for Seas is going to be a place for a lot of newer players to kind of jump in, find their sea legs, and hopefully eventually jump over to the high seas. Now, before we kind of go through all of it, I am just gonna walk through the basics that you're, you're gonna need to know to just get started into the safe seas. So like I said, I'm just doing this video a little bit different. I'm recording this live as I'm playing it through, and I'm just gonna talk through it as if I was uh, streaming the game. So if you like this, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and without further ado, let's jump in to Safer Seas. Here we are in Sea of Thieves. We just loaded up the for the, the game for the first time, and you're gonna be greeted with some instructions to select your pirate. Now, what's cool about the pirate creation mode, if you've never done this before, is it's randomly generated pirates. So you can create new pirates uh, on PC. It's page down. I'm not quite sure what it is on Xbox, but you're just gonna scroll through and find a pirate that speaks to you, okay? That's the important part. Find a pirate that speaks to your inner heart. Now, when I found my main pirate, I call him the Cursed Captain. He was actually one of the first original six uh, that I see this guy. He speaks to me. This guy right here. He speaks to me. Look at him. Oh, uh, what, a, what a legendary pirate. That's the most important thing. Find someone that speaks to you that you like and go for it. You can favorite pirates uh, that kind of speak to you and all of that. But in this case, look at the schnoz on that guy. Let's refresh one more time. Now, I know some people that have taken many, many hours to find the perfect pirate. So after some looking, after some refreshing, I finally found a pirate that I think is going to be perfect for this series where we take a deep dive into the safer seas. I don't know what his name will be, but he, he looks like a pirate of legendary status. So once you find your pirate, you're going to select him. And you're going to set sail for the first time. Now, after you uh, create this, it's going to kind of let you. It's going to mention some things. You can opt in to these. Uh, in this case, I'm going to hit no. Now we're in the main menu. Now this menu can get confusing at times, but for our purposes, it's going to be really easy. There's a lot of something called tall tales in Sea of Thieves. There's the nine original tall tales that have a couple further uh tall tales that kind of tell you more about the story of the game there's also pirate's life tall tales with jack sparrow and then we have the legend of monkey island tall tales these are just experiences that you can set that you can actually do in the safer seas uh and really kind of it's like goonies okay it's like goonies takes you out takes you out there in the world and it's it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun so to set sail for the first time we are going to click maiden voyage this is going to teach you the very basics of the game before we jump in to safer sea so let's set sail here on the maiden voyage there's also a little spot i'll show you how to get some gold really quickly and really easily so that as soon as you jump in you can buy some cosmetics so you don't look like such a swabby pirate kind of the maiden voyage you're going to wake up on the beach here and be greeted by the pirate lord himself He's going to have some dialogue here. Now, I highly, highly recommend just listening to the story. This is what this game is about. One of my favorite things about it, for sure, is just the story of the game itself. You look a little worse for wear, my friend. You must be on quite the journey. We I are, Pirate Lord. You. We are. Can do wonders for your spirits. 
Now, like I said, there's going to be some things that I'm going to recommend that you do right out of the bat. There's some settings that I highly recommend that you change. So before we go any further, we're going to go to settings. We're going to jump down to graphic settings, and we are going to increase uh, the field of view to 90, which is the max for the game. I don't know why they set it down to whatever it was, but you're going to want to set it to 90. This can help you kind of see the game a little bit better and see the world around you you can also jump in and change some other settings like in your keyboard and mouse and controller uh one of the things that i like to turn on is actually under audio settings you can scroll down to here i want to turn music down just a little bit you can scroll down to enable aim audio assist so this is a really great feature one it helps you kind of i'll show i'll kind of demonstrate it a little bit later but it lets you know with the sound uh, when you kill like PVE, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. Uh, hopefully you like it too, but I recommend turning that setting on. There's some other things that you can turn on, but worry not about those things. Now, I'm not going to do this whole maiden voyage for you. I want you to discover that for yourself. It's important to me that you kind of figure this out on your own. There's an element to Sea of Thieves that is about the adventure, about the discovery. And the maiden voyage is really easy to understand and really easy to follow through. But there is something I do want to show you, which is a way to make some quick gold for when you do finish the maiden voyage and set off into safer seas. So, like, he wants us to go pick up that cutlass over there. There, Pirate Lord's going to instruct you through all of the things that you need to do. And I do have a full guide of all the details on everything that you need to know for the Maiden Voyage if you do get lost. And I'll make sure to link that in the comments below. But I really think that this is important for you to kind of just jump through, experience it for yourself, uh, and all that. But let's go find you some quick and easy gold if this is your first time setting sail. So, from the starting point where you start... You're going to turn around and you're going to go up this hill here. This is the ship wreckage. And right here, there is a kind of like the hole of the ship. And we have some gold down there that we want to get. Now, to get down there, we got to find a key. So we're going to follow this pathway up. And we're going to go all the way up here to this pool over here. Now, you can make this jump if you want to. But if you're like, hey, I can't make that jump, you can come over here. I'll show you the long way around. I'll show you the long way around. So we're coming up here. Perfect. Okay. Now in this body of water, in this little pool, there is the key right down here somewhere. There it is right there. Boom. Key. Grab this key. And you're going to go down to the bottom of the ship that I showed you. So we're just going to make our way back here. And jump around. Place this key in here. Now at the bottom of this little area, there is a journal here. So that if you want to get all of them, I want to just jump down. And look at all this free gold. We're going to take it for ourselves. This is how we do it. Boom. As some pirates say, we're rich. So here's one of the journals if you want to read that little fun story. And that's it. So I just want to show that quick, easy 26,000 gold. Buy yourself a pair of pants, maybe boots or something. I don't know. Whatever you want to buy. Quick and easy gold. I don't think there's any other gold down here. So that's it. So once you get yourself some gold, run back to the pirate, the pirate lord right here. And... Finish the Maiden Voyage. And like I said, I'm going to link the full entire Maiden Voyage uh, right up here. So if you get lost a little bit, you can watch that, including where all the journal locations are and everything like that. But like I said, I really recommend you kind of just playing this. The whole point of Sea of Thieves is about discovery. And there's an element of discovery within Sea of Thieves that is so absolutely fun. And I really want you to kind of fall in love with the game the same way that I fell in love with it so uh enjoy your maiden voyage let's pick up over on the safer seas now that we have covered the maiden voyage which is the first thing that you want to do if you're playing see if these for the first time when you load into the game you're going to see this now the menu can get a little bit confusing but i'm going to show you how to navigate your way to safer seas you're going to click play then you're going to click adventure and then right here, you want to make sure you select Safer Seas. 
Now, from here, there's going to be a couple things that you're not going to have access to. And I want to kind of cover everything that you will have access to and the things that you won't have access to. So first, let's talk about the biggest thing about safer seas. Number one, reputation and gold values. In the high seas, you're going to get full value for all of the treasure that you find out in the game. However, with safer seas, you're going to get 30% the value of that item. In other words, if something is a thousand gold in higher seas, you're going to get 300 gold for the same thing in the safer seas. Here are the key features I want to kind of hit before we jump into safer seas. Progress up to level 40 in all training companies except the Reapers, Bones, and Athena's Fortune, which means it's going to be limited to level 40. You can still earn gold and reputation, but you're going to earn it at a reduced rate. Earn seasonal renown at the same rate as high seas, which is going to be pretty nice for you if you were trying to get your seasonal renown for the season pass and all of that stuff. You can play through all of the tall tales solo or with your friends. You can invite them to your boat and set sail on a sloop, a brig, or a galleon. You can work towards all applicable accommodations and achievements. You can purchase cosmetics from the outpost and the seapost stores. And of course, you can invite any Xbox Live friends into your session. Now, here are some key features that are exclusive to the high seas that I want to make mention of. Number one, you can only become a pirate in the high seas. You can earn reputation and gold for Athena's fortune and the Reaper's bones. Hourglass faction battles, which is a whole nother video that I'll jump into later, but Hourglass is a whole nother deal. You can captain your own ship. You can sail as a part of a guild. You sail as a trading company emissary. You can participate in live events such as Gold and Glory. And the last thing is you can participate in the Skull of Siren Song Voyage. Now, these things are limited to the high seas. So eventually, the hope is if you watch these videos and enjoy this, this content, I can prepare you for the high seas. Now, it might take some time because some of you scurvy scallywags you need to find your sea legs. But that's kind of the main differences I want to kind of touch base on. So in safer seas, you're not going to be you're not going to be able to access your ship because you won't have one and you're not going to be able to sail for for a guild. You're going to have to play the game kind of bare bones. And to do that, you're going to click charter a ship. If you're solo, you're playing by yourself, you're going to go on a sloop. You can kind of see all the different sizes here. But if you're one to two players, you're going to do a sloop. If you're on a brig, you're going to do two to three players. I do not recommend in using a brig two to three it is a little bit more challenging to navigate and if you're on a galleon definitely you're gonna you're gonna want that full crew sloop is the best ship i love the sloop and you're gonna love it too so if you're solo highly recommend there click sloop confirm and assemble a crew and then you're just going to set sail all right we are setting sail for the first time in the safer seas so like i said it's reduced kind of value on the gold but if this is your first time you're gonna wake up in one of the many taverns within sea of thieves and coincidentally i woke up at one of the outposts called the uh called port merrick it's called port merrick all right mysterious stranger he is gonna become important for later things but for you right now he just kind of told you what you need to do so within sea of thieves there's three main trading companies that you're going to deal with Gold hoarders, you're going to deal with order souls, and you're going to deal with the merchant alliance. Now, there are some signs within Port Merrick, but this is one of the biggest outposts. It's one of the newer ones as well. There's a whole story with this that you will probably find entertaining, and I highly recommend watching Captain and Falcor's videos on this. But this, we fought for this. We, there used, this place used to be called Golden Sands, is what this place used to be, and now it's Port Merrick. We don't like Merrick. This is important. This is this is Merrick. Okay, we don't we don't like him, but some people do. But we, I don't want to get in the details about why I don't like him. But anyways, okay, we're gonna move on. Your first time playing Safer Seas, you're gonna run around. Now there is gonna be no boats on the horizon that are players. This is great for you. That means you don't have to worry about the PvP. Now you will see out there in the world, you're gonna see a lot of things out there. One of the things I'm looking for right now is a world event. I'm seeing if there's any world events right now. You're going to look for a big skull in the sky, maybe a tornado. Uh, well, there's maybe a red tornado or a green tornado, but I'm not really seeing anything right now. So in this case, we're going to set, uh, we're going to go do our first voyage. As you can see right there, it's telling us what to do right there in the gold hoarders. 
One of the things I love very much about Sea of Thieves is they try their best to limit the amount of UI on your screen. So they really try to tell you within the game world where to go. So right here, you can kind of see like there's signs here. These signs tell you where to go. That looks like a gold hoarder. It is, it's the gold for gold hoarder. It's this way, so we're gonna follow it this way. This is the order of souls. And if we go up here, boom. That looks pretty gold hoardery to me. We're gonna go in, talk to this guy. What's up, Hugh? Give me a voyage, sir. It's gonna give our first voyage, boom. We're gonna set sail, love it. Buy the voyage. Hey, let me check your pockets. And we're gonna set sail. All right. Now, to set sail for the first time, this is gonna be new experience for you. You're gonna come over here, and you are going to pick up the anchor and drop the sails. There's a lot that you gotta, gotta focus on if this is your first time here. You can kind of just jump over there. If you get knocked off, you can grab the ladder here. And I'll show you what happens if you get really, really knocked off. And that's okay. Okay, so we're on our boat. We got our voyage. We got to vote that, that bad boy down. We're going to come down to the bottom here. And we're going to set propose the voyage. I select voyages. And we're going to go quest for gold. Excellent. Our first voyage. You, me, us together. Well, not my first voyage, but your first voyage. But it's, it's definitely this guy's first voyage. He's never seen a voyage in his life before. Okay. Upon voting that down, you are going to get a map. Now, I forget how to do... There we go. No. Boom. Quests. Map. Now we got to find this, this island. So we're going to come over to the map table. And we're going to look for it. Something that matches this. Now, usually with this, it's going to be an island pretty close to you. So, this is the... I'm pretty sure that's the island. Let's find out. Is that the island? It's the island. So, now let's head to the island. Now, to get to there, you have to get your ship there. Which is might be kind of confusing if this is your first time. That's what I'm here for. First thing is, you have to pick up your anchor. It is currently down. So, we're going to raise the anchor gonna take a second and we are going to set sail and look at that we have a world event let's do that after we do our first voyage okay so we're gonna grab the helm and we're going to head what looked like it was north on the map now I'm gonna give you a quick tip for you if you're navigating the sea of these for the first time the seas can get really confusing there's a lot of islands out there. And if you're not very experienced in the game, you're going to get lost very easy. So I, when I first started playing, I checked my map all of the time. And one of the things I would always do is I would run down to the map table and just kind of see is like, is my boat going the direction that I want it to go? So I highlighted where I want to go. And am I going the right direction? Now, one of the things I learned that later on is you can actually, from the sloop, you can just peek down at the table right here. So you can be on the helm, and then you're like, okay, am I going the right way? You can just quickly look over here, and you can kind of see, okay, I am heading the right direction, which is great. Something to note as well, this is your first time on the helm, which I'm sure for most of you scurvy dogs, it is. When you're completely centered on your helm, going completely straight, not turning left, not turning right, you're going to get one of these noises. I want to turn it up for you. That noise right there, that lets you know that your, that your wheel is completely straightened out. So that's kind of a good audio cue for you to kind of learn what's going on. Looks like we are approaching the island. Now, it will tell us the name of the island when we get close to it. It'll give us an island banner, which will be pretty great. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go to our set, uh, sail length and we're going to raise the sails. When we get close, of course. So we're just going to start raising the sails for the first time. I've never done this before. Don't be nervous. I have thousands of hours in this game and I still crash all the time so it's really no big deal 
We're going to just turn a little bit right here. Boom. Now, you can drop the anchor. Since this is safe for seas, you don't have to worry too much about other players, obviously, since there is none. Uh, but it's not highly recommended to make that a good habit. You can do it for now, but uh, just in general, it's not a good habit to drop your anchor. It's best to kind of get used to navigating your ship in a way that is going to benefit you also when you jump into the high seas. So one of the things I like to do, if you want to stop your ship completely, bring your sails all the way up, drop your anchor, and then once your boat stops moving, bring your anchor back up. This way, your boat is kind of ready to move, uh, to move on and kind of get to where it needs to go. Okay. Now, let's look at the map. There's an X that marks the spot. If you're on PC, you can hit F to zoom in. I'm not exactly sure what it is on Xbox. You're going to have to button smash to kind of figure that out. But that's where we got to go. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip to find out how to know where that X marks the spot is. Because it does get a little confusing. Now, before we go over there, we need to make sure we have our weapons equipped. So, if you come down here, you have your armory. Well, let me just break down some of the things that you have on your sloop. Okay? You have your armory. You have your ammo chest all on your boat at all times. You get infinity ammo from your ammo chest. You come down here, you're going to have your wood. You're going to have your food barrel. You have two barrels for your food. You can cook things like fish. Yes, there's fish in Sea of Thieves if you didn't know that. You can also drink grog and take a nap. If you're feeling a little like you had a little too much to drink, you can take a nap right there. It's perfect. Um, you can also jump in here for your clothing chest. If you buy a pet in the Pirate Emporium, which are super cute, you can get them there. You can also change your equipment here and, of course, your vanity chest here. So there's lots, lots of things that you can do. You can kind of change how you look in the Sea of Thieves pretty quickly. Uh, in fact, we're going to add, give ourselves a mustache and let's give ourselves some beautiful frolicking hair. Okay, beautiful. Love it. Excellent. Um, anything else that we can do? We can change the color. Cool. No, we're... We're going to go with old. We're old, man. Um, we Okay, that's all we got. All right. This is fine. This is where you do emotes. It's very basic, but you're good to go. And as far as weapons go, there's four types of weapons. I use the sword and flintlock. I like to feel like a pirate, uh, but you can use whatever weapons that you most prefer. So in this case, uh, we are going to... Ooh, uh, we're going to use the... Hold on one second. We're going to put the sword... The flintlock on the first one, and I'm gonna put the sword on number two. That's just how I like. I'm very used to that. Okay. Well, we're gonna go find our buried treasure from our voyage, which is right here. Ha ha! We're gonna jump off the boat and we're going to go find the X marks the spot. Now, an easy way to figure this out, I'm gonna give you kind of a tip here, is is if you take out your compass and you position yourself to where you're looking north, then go to your map and take that out, you are now kind of oriented in a way to understand where the X might be. So in this case, I know it's going to be on the bigger island, which here's the small little islands. So it's going to be on the bigger island. Looks like there's some palm trees. Okay, palm trees. And it's just kind of at the edge of what appears to be the grass. So we're going to come right here. We're going to take out our shovel. We're going to dig up our treasure. Now, this might not look like much. It's not. It's just a castaway chest. It's the lowest tier of the value. But it's still your first chest, and you should be excited for it. These guys die with one shot. Don't let them harass you. It is safe for seas, but let's be honest. PvP might be the most toxic thing in this game. Okay, we're going to finish digging up our chest. Takes a couple more digs. A few more digs. Okay, perfect. We're going to pick it up, and we're going to take it back to our boat. And then we're going to set sail. We're not going to go to Port Merrick. We're going to go to another outpost. I want to kind of show you the Sea of Thieves world, if you will. If you would be willing to, to hang out with me, I'll kind of teach you all of that. Any second. Any second here. So once you got the chest, take it back to your boat. Climb up the ladder here. And if you want, you can use the harpoons later. But we're just going to plop it right there. Now coming down to the map, I'm going to show you kind of where all the outposts are. I believe there are seven outposts in Sea of Thieves. So on the very left side of the map, you have Sanctuary Outpost. You have Port Merrick. Then coming down here, you can have Plunder Outpost. 
This is where you're going to have Ancient Spire Outpost. Over here, you're going to have Marl's Peak Outpost. This area is called the Devil's Roar. It's very nasty. Lots of volcanoes. Don't go here unless you want a good time. Uh, but yeah, you have Marl's Peak Outpost right there. Kind of to the north, we're going to have Ghoulian's Grave, Dagger Tooth, and that's it. Those are your outposts. So you can sell treasure at any of these outposts, okay? Sometimes you have to go to specific outposts for specific voyages. But in this case, uh, we're just selling treasure, and that can be sold at any of the outposts. So we're going to go to Sanctuary, which happens to be one of my favorite outposts in the game. So that is to the north, and we're going to drop sails. Now, if you look here, I have a little compass here. kind of teaches me where I'm going. Um, but similar to like that trick I showed you earlier, we're going to zoom out. So I can see where my boat is and where I want to go. Can even mark it again. And then we'll leave the map there so I can kind of see where I'm going from up here. There you go. So yeah, this is Sea of Thieves. Now we can get a little bit more detailed in our sailing if you want. I can kind of explain that a little bit while we have some time. So when you look up, you're going to have wind that is blowing. You can adjust your sails to catch wind and go a little bit faster, which is pretty awesome. Now, there is going to be a moment where you're going directly against wind. And on a sloop, there's something called dummy sails. And I'll kind of explain that in a little bit. But essentially, if the wind, if you can't catch wind in any way, you're going to want to make sure that your sails are absolutely flat. This will be the fastest way for you to travel. So if you can't catch wind at all, just make your sails flat and you are good to go. But if you do look up and you see that you can catch wind, make sure to catch wind, okay? Become a great sailor. Become a great pirate. You might be on safer seas, but you are still a damn legend in the making. So make sure to take the time to learn the little subtleties of this game that make it so good. So this is Sanctuary Outpost. That's the dock over there where we're going to park our boat. So we're going to kind of move in a little bit slower and bring up the sails. Turn the boat this way. Bring up the sails a little bit more. Don't worry, I'm a professional pirate. I don't crash into rocks, islands, or anything like that. But if you're not convinced, um, may or may not have crashed into a thing time or two. Now, you know, if you want to, if you're lazy, you're feeling a little bit lazy, you can just ram your boat and, and crash it. But listen, parking your boat is an art form, okay? You want to make sure that you do it and that you do it well. So that you don't get made fun of by your friends and all the people out in the high seas that will make fun of you for your parking job. Listen, I know I'm one of them, okay? If you do a bad parking job, we'll make fun of you. Don't let us make fun of you. Learn how to park your boat in a nice way. Okay, because I'm pretty sure... That's a professional parking job for the most part. Okay, we're going to grab our chest and we're going to go sell it. We're about to make our first gold. It's incredible. We just earned some rewards. We're professional pirates. We're going to take this over. Now, when you get loot, you do have to sell it to your trading company. The gold orders take specific types of chests and trinkets and things like that. Any skull that you have is going to go to the Order of Souls Lady. These people are weird. And very odd. Um, so that's where it's going to go. And then any crates or any merchant-related items, they're going to go to the merchant uh, right there. You can't... Wait, hold on. Where are they? They should be standing there. There they are. Right there. Merchant. Bam. That's where you're going to send any merchant crates. But we have a gold hoarder. We have a chest of gold. So we're going to take this to the gold hoarder. Oh. Boom. We just completed our first voyage in Safer Seas, which is pretty fantastic, I must say. Now, before we do anything else, we are going to take on our first world event because that's what we're here for. I'm here to teach you and guide you along your way in Safer Seas. And any questions that you may have, make sure to post them in the comments uh, in the comments of this video so I can answer them, so I can make guides on them. We're making these guide videos a little bit different. I'm making these guide videos a little bit different than I, what I would normally, because honestly, I wanna try something new and I just wanna do something a little bit different in the seas. And I really hope you guys enjoy these videos because I just wanted to take newer people through the seas. I love teaching people. I have always kind of been one of those guys that likes to take care of people in this game. So I, I love this game. Been a day one player, thousands of hours into it, still get super excited to play Sea of Thieves. Now, 
that we have done our first voyage, we are going to go take on the Skull Fort. So wish us luck because we're going to head that way. Now, what's cool about the Skull Fort is you don't need to look at your map. Just look at the big skull in the sky and we're going to set sail there. Turn the boat and set sail. Boom. Can you do more voyages? Yes. You can start to purchase voyages from all of the trading companies uh, if you want to start doing just more voyages. But world events, world events are a great way to make gold. Also, another great way to make gold is to do something called sea forts. There are sea forts scattered all throughout this Sea of Thieves. You got a sea fort here. You got a sea fort over here. You got a sea fort down here and a sea fort over here. You also have a sea fort over over here. And you got a sea fort up, up in here. So sea forts are everywhere. These are really great ways to make gold and make them kind of in, an, in a non-stressful kind of way. But looking up at the cloud here, the skull, it looks like it wants us to go dead south. So I'm going to assume that the fort we got to go to is Sailor's Not Stronghold. So I'm just going to take the direction and take the boat in the direction of the big skull so earlier like i said if you can't catch wind keep your sails flat but i think we can catch a little bit of wind so we're going to angle our sails here and maybe turn the boat a little bit to catch that beautiful speed that we need all right now i quickly want to explain dummy sails one more time for all of you so if you're looking right now the wind is kind of coming directly at us and you would think that you would need to cut your sail to try to catch as much wind as possible but in sea of thieves we have something called the dummy sail so if you're on a sloop it's actually best if you can't catch wind at all in any way to just straighten out your sails this will give you the fastest speed possible we call them dummy sails because it's just kind of you know default then if you can't figure that out then we're a dummy but in this case <laughs> it's all you need to know so as we approach our first ever world event, we're gonna see this big skull in the sky. We're gonna ha we're gonna have to fight a few waves of skeletons, including one of the bosses. Once we do all of that, we're gonna get a key and open our vault full of treasure. But approaching a skull fort for the first time can get a little dicey, and I'm going to teach you a technique that is going to be very safe for you to do it. It's safe for season. I don't want you to get absolutely destroyed upon approaching your first sea fort or your first like fort, honestly. Uh, and it might seem like what I'm saying is kind of crazy. Listen, I'm a pirate and thousands of hours in this game. It is crazy, but it works. And that's the most important part. So as you approach, skeletons are going to shoot at your ship and try to kill you. And this is where things can get a little dicey because those skeletons like to aim for your little noggin. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Because if you die as you approach, you might actually sink your boat. Which, if you do sink, you'll just respawn somewhere on the island or on the map. So it's not that big of a deal. But in this case, we don't want to die. So we're going to come down here. We're going to grab some wood. We're going to come down here and grab some food. We're going to come back up here. So what I like to do is I like to aim my boat directly at the island. Oh, speed seriously not kidding if you're doing this by yourself one cannonball can take you out and can absolutely get you sunk so you don't want to take any risks but what is cool is you can basically approach the fort uh and once you get close all of the cannon placements that are defending the fort those skeletons will go away so then all you have to worry about is the skeletons on the actual island itself oh the music you know you're close all right, so like I said, I'm aiming the boat at just right into the smack dab middle of the fort. Now, this works on any of the forts. If you're with a crew or you're playing with some of your friends, just you don't have to do it this way, but this is just kind of if you're solo. But if you do have some friends with you, just have them kind of stay down below deck so that they don't get hit with a single cannon and uh, get knocked out. So we're going to set the sail directly towards here, and I am going to step down right here now this might seem crazy but i have gotten one ball many times approaching a fort which has resulted in my death and the untimely sinking of my boat 
Now we should see the skeletons here kind of disappear once we get close enough to the island and all of those cannon shots should stop shooting. So there's the skeletons and poof, they are gone. So we ran the island. We're gonna drop the anchor. We're gonna raise the sails. Like I said, it seems crazy, but it works 100% of the time. And taking a couple cannon shots is not that big of a deal. So grab yourself a bucket, bucket out some water, prepare up the boat. Easy peasy. Boom. We're going to take this water. We're going to chuck it out. Make sure that we're bone dry. If there's any water down here, that means you have a hole somewhere, unless you're in the storm, which is just rain. So now we're going to pick up the sails, pick up the anchor. And we are going to go fight some skeletons and do our first world event in this series called Hippo TC it takes you on a guided tour for safer seas. All right, so we're just going to turn the boat a little bit. And go fight some skellies. Now, forts, I believe, are 10 waves. Last I checked, I'm not 100% sure. But essentially what will happen is you're going to do quite a few waves of skeletons until you get to the big boss. Then once you get to the big boss, you are going to kill the boss and you are good to go. You're going to get that key. So if you see any barrels, make sure to jump in there and see if there is some good food in there. I will have a full food guide for you kind of show on the screen right now. It'll kind of break down each and every single food item. I also have a video I'll link in the comments in the description where it'll showcase all of the food types, all of the meat types, and all of that stuff. So you kind of know the benefits of each food. In this case, pineapple is some of the best food and mangoes are gonna be the next one. So we're gonna grab this pineapple, mango, and the palms. Pomegranates are gonna be next. Now there are a ton of kegs at forts. You can use these to kill skeletons. It makes the job really really significantly easier to do this job so uh we're gonna come up here and we are going to pick a fight with some skeletons now one of the cool things with the sword is you can do something called a lunge so if you hold down your attack you will do a lunge and a lunge can be used to take out multiple skeletons at once, which is pretty neat. I use the lunge all the time, especially clearing out um, like PVE things like uh, ports and things like that. Now you can also, I highly recommend blocking first and then doing your lunge because you can practice something called the jumping lunge. So if you time your jump just right, you can kind of do this jumping lunge. Once you hear this shing, that noise, that's when you jump. I know it sounds like a crazy person, but I'm being serious. So you block first, then you charge your lunge, and then you jump. So we're just gonna clear out these skeletons. Easy peasy. What's cool about the sword is you can actually hurt multiple skeletons at once, which is pretty neat makes PVE, especially against skeletons, a little bit easier. Get some ammo. Sometimes skeletons will drop ammo pouches that you can pick up and refill your ammo. And then each fort has uh, has ammo crates that you can just get full on ammo as well. So here's that jumping lunge I was talking about. But if you're, you know, that's a little too hard for you, you can just click your uh, M1 or your right trigger and you'll just do your three hit combo. That's fine as well. Perfect. Clearing out skeletons. That's really all we're doing. 
we're getting familiar with the layout we're getting familiar with how what it's like to fight skeletons oh i thought they were closer now something that you do want to keep track of is you want to keep track of your health bar on the bottom left if your health bar if your health bar gets slow you want to make sure you eat some of that beautiful food that we've been finding so don't let those skeletons get you Ooh, sounds like we have quite is a treasure in the vault now you can block skeletons if they attack you obviously you can't block bullets so you're gonna have to kill those guys but you can block skeletons if they attack you with a sword and you can just counter them like that pretty easy one of the cool things that they did with season nine of cfds is they scaled world events depending on your crew size which makes uh these things a little bit easier for you we're just gonna eat some food All right, now at one point you might find yourself with some kegs. Now you can shoot these kegs and blow these skeletons up, or if you want, you can shoot their legs out and you can save these kegs later for a little surprise. So let's do that. We're gonna pick this keg up, remove it here. Just in case skeletons spawn there, we're gonna take care of business right there. Don't hear any skeletons. So we're gonna kind of look around. It looks like we got some right here. Easy. Easy. What's great about uh, some of these world events is it kind of throws different types of PVE at you, so you can kind of get used to the different types. There are different types of skeletons within the game as well. So you, these are like regular skeletons. They don't kind of take anything special to kill. But if you do run into a gold skeleton, they move a little bit slower and they are harder to kill. You can't, I think you can kill them with a sword. It just takes an incredibly long time. But if you throw a little bit of water on them, they will blow up right away. So we're gonna blow these kegs. And we're gonna eat some food. That's why we like to save the kegs. Makes quick work of skeletons. Boom. Perfect. Oh. Oh, we got some more kegs. We're just going to blow these guys up right away. Should make uh, that wave of skeletons pretty easy. Doesn't look like there's any more skeletons. Ooh. Is that it? Oh. Now, eventually, you're going to get to a wave. We're going to fight some bosses. These guys have a little name above them. These skeletons will be a little bit tougher to fight. They're not going to die as quickly or easily. So highly recommend you kill all the other skeletons first. And then you work on these guys. After killing these guys, they're going to drop some skulls for you to pick up and some gold that you're going to want as well. And some, some loot. So we're going to pick this up. We're going to kind of move this out so we know what's going on. And there we go. We got the big, oh, got some kegs here. We're going to try to move back and kill those guys. Another keg there. This guy is very angry. We're going to blow this guy up. We're going to bait him in. Let 
Come here, big skeleton boss man. Yeah! Oi! Skeleton's turned in the way. One of the best things to use on the boss is in fact the lunge, because if you master that jumping lunge, you can kind of jump through the uh the boss. In this case, we're just gonna kind of take it a little bit slower. Get a little closer, use our sword. Hit him a few times. Maybe shoot him for good measure. Eventually this scurvy dog is just gonna die. Seems like he's got a lot going on. Ammo. Seems tormented. Let's put him out of this misery. So one of the things that I love about Sea of Thieves is there's actually no health bar, so you don't know how much health the boss has left. So it does it does add a little bit to what I appreciate about the game, which is just kind of letting you discover, discover what's going on for yourself. Boom! And eventually you will kill the big boss and get a key and a skull. This key is your first one. Celebrate this moment, okay? You did work, you did good. You're gonna take this key to whatever fort you are, look for the vault, and you're gonna throw this key on in, and you, my friends, just became a richer pirate for it. Lots of treasure. Now, we can take these kegs with us, but they do pose a threat on our boat, so I'm going to show you kind of where to place them. Now, one of the things that I have not shown yet is harpoons. Harpoons on the boat help you get treasure onto your ship, which is awesome because moving one piece at a time can be a little tedious now there are certain spots at each fort that makes it a little bit better to harpoon uh if you come to this fort this spot is really good and i'll show you why in a moment but we're going to just move all this treasure over there everything and anything you find we're going to move on over there including these skulls Get a couple gold pouches down there. Over here. We have some skeleton orders too that we're going to go dig up. But for now, we're just going to move all the loot into one big pile so that we can harpoon it. Now, we do have some skeleton orders that we can dig. So if you use that technique that I talked about earlier, just take out your compass, look at north, and look at your dig spot and kind of start to figure out where it is. So it looks like it's near the northern beach. If we're following there, there's a rock there. So we're on this, that rock right there. And so it's kind of on the other side of this rock, what looks like next to some barrels. Take out our shovel. And if you get it right, you're gonna get that beautiful noise and dig up your your treasure here. Excellent. Now that key that we found earlier, we're gonna be able to use to open up this chest, which is pretty great. Um, we'll leave that there for now. We did have another dig. It looks like it was very close to where we were. Kind of right here. Perfect. Found a little bit of tea. Every good pirate needs tea. Unless you're an American. We throw that crap overboard. All right, we're going to move it right here. And we're going to harpoon this in a little bit. But for now, we're going to move the rest of the treasure in that spot. And I'm going to show you why. Now, out of all of the treasure... In this vault, the thing that is the most fun to use in the high seas is the mega kegs, followed closely by the regular keg. Now, in safer seas, these are not mu as much of a threat 
uh, to kind of take out onto your boat. They do make use a little bit of gold, so you definitely bring them with you. But if you are on safer seas, they, they can still blow up. PvE, PvE can shoot them. Sometimes a skeleton ship will spawn on you as you're setting sail. Uh, in the case of that, you're going to want to make sure that these guys are in your crow's nest. Otherwise, they will blow up your boat and you will die. So if you do decide to bring kegs along with you, make sure to place them in your crow's nest. If you are in the high seas, however, I recommend not bringing these with you as these are a really big, really big risk that you don't, you just don't want to deal with. Trust me on that one. As someone who has blown many pirates up before, roll the clips. Like, go, go. Craig, Craig, one, he yeah, yeet! Ah! Oh god! Pushing them back and kicks. Here we go, everyone's gonna die. Everybody dies here! Yeah, you're not going to want to take these with you because they are fun to blow up, especially in the high seas. But like I said, safer seas, they'll earn you a little bit of coin. So let's just speed this part up. I'm going to fast forward this part and quickly move all of the treasure. Now that we've moved all the treasure right here, we are going to bring the boat over here and harpoon it all. We also found one of these bad boys. This is a trident of what is called the trident. Sorry, Trident and Dark Tides. I was about to call it the Trident of Destiny. It's a Trident. We call them Disney sticks, okay? They came out when A Pirate's Life Tall Tales came out. These are fantastic uses for PvE world events, especially bosses. These do a massive amount of damage. I'll make sure to have the video where I go into depth on these bad boys uh, in the comments and, and linked above. But these are, these are great. So if you find these along your travels, make sure to pick them up. You can charge uh, them up to a tier three bubble and shoot these at enemies. And they do a massive ton of damage. You can also do a tier one and a tier two. Eventually, you will run out of juice on the trident and it will disappear. But make sure if you do find these, take them with you because you will find them useful later for the different things that you do. So, like I said, we moved all the treasure. So, now let's position our boat in a way where we can just kind of harpoon it all and uh, set off to the nearest outpost and sell our beautiful treasure. So, because our anchor is up and our sails up are up, we're just going to turn the boat, turn it around completely, and move it into a position to use the harpoons. Which are great. Harpoons, I don't know. I don't remember exactly when they came out. But these are amazing additions to the game. And then recently in Season 9, they made them even better. Where if you harpoon treasure, it just drops right onto your boat. So let's move this forward just a little bit. And we're going to harpoon this treasure that we placed right here. Perfect. Don't worry. The island won't do that much damage. So we're just going to move over here. Grab the sails a little bit more. One of the best things about Sea of Thieves is the sound cues in this game. So they've designed it, like I said earlier, to make it as minimal as possible. So if you are on your boat and you have a hole and you're listening, you're going to hear a hole slowly filling in uh water into your boat and then eventually if your boat is big time sinking you're gonna hear it like you're gonna hear it get really really loud the creaking of the boat and it'll be very obvious that the uh that the boat is sinking okay now we're gonna harpoon the ground here and if you uh on pc it's right click i forget what it is on xbox but we're gonna do that which kind of slows the boat down and just position our boat in a way that we can harpoon all this treasure I am noticing a setting I'm going to turn off. One of the things uh, I haven't always had off, but I recently turned off, is camera shake. 
Uh, this is because I found myself getting a little bit of headache. So if you want to turn that off too, I'm going to show you where to do that. Uh, go to graphic settings and scroll down. And you're under visibility, you're going to turn on disable blur. That's for some treasure that is just going to kind of mess with you. And you can also turn off screen shake right here. Now, if you want to disable rats on your boat, you can as well. But the rats also kind of act as a a way for you to know that your boat is sinking. Because rats will start running out from the bottom of your boat um, to kind of like let you know that there's, that there's water down there that they don't want to be in. Okay, so just position the boat to get the rest of the treasure. Boom. Now that we got all the treasure, we are going to set course to the nearest outpost. Now, in this case, we could go to Port Merrick, but one of the things that you're going to learn really quickly is that selling treasure can take a little bit of time. And there's certain outposts that are going to be a little bit more difficult to sell your treasure at. One of the best outposts is going to be Galleon's Grave because it's a smaller island and you can park your boat here and the run to the the outpost is or to the trading companies is not so bad. Same thing with Ancient Spire and Plunder Outpost. Port Merrick is going to be pretty bad. Uh, Sanctuary is going to take some time to sell. And then Daggertooth, oh my goodness. Daggertooth is probably the worst, um, second only to Port Merrick. So we're going to head to Plunder Outposts and we're going to kind of position the map like this. Now, one of the chests that I want to kind of point out we have the Chest of Sorrow. Now, this has gotten a lot of new people sunk a lot in Sea of Thieves. Because this bad boy cries, and he likes to fill up your boat with water. So, if you do end up picking up one of these on your travels, when you hear the crying, just know you're going to need to bucket your boat. Otherwise, you will sink. This has claimed many, many pirates in the day. So, we're just going to keep an eye on that bad boy. So, Plunder Outpost is southeast it looks like so we're just going to turn the boat and set sail that way now it does appear that there is a storm along the way and like i said earlier we do have some kegs so we are going to do our best to avoid that storm because if you have kegs on your boat lightning can hit them and blow it up so that will not be good so we're going to grab the uh gunpowder kegs now we don't need this one these ones aren't worth a lot so we're going to just drop that off but this stronghold keg is actually worth quite a bit if you uh, sell it to the to the merchant. So we're going to take this bad boy and we're going to put it in the crow's nest. Like I said, this is not activity that I would highly recommend doing in, um, in high seas. But in safer seas, it should be all right as long as PVE doesn't get you. So we're just going to drop it right there and we're going to come back down here. But... Like I said, high seas, you're not going to want any mega kegs on your boat. I mean, you can if you want to. But people like me will blow them up. Run the clip again. I want, I want to sink all three ships with mega kegs. Bomb has been that bomb's been planted. Bomb has been planted. <laughs> it's what they get for being a bunch of alliances, you know? Bomb has been planted. Okay, we're gonna plant one more bomb. Best thing through the rear. The problem with that idea is like they'll see bomb it. Bomb has you know? been planted. Yep. All right. There we go. How you feeling? First time jumping in. You, if you've been following me along this journey, we have set sail and done our, we've done our first voyage ever, which is pretty cool. I've kind of explained some of the, the ship uh, to you on the sloop anyway, and kind of how to navigate and use the sloop, kind of how to park at islands. We've also taken on our first world event, which is the Skull Fort, which coincidentally is the first world event ever made in Sea of Thieves. They recently added some new ones uh, with like the Fort of Fortunes, the Fort of the Dams, 
You got this ghost fleet, which is what this is. And within this series that I'm doing, uh, where I, again, and your guide, Hippo TC, taking you along the journey of kind of experiencing safer seas, uh, I'm going to do the ghost fleet at one point. So make sure to tune in for that. Subscribe so you don't miss when I post that video. And if you have any questions that you would like me to answer, please let me know in the comments below. I do take the time to read them. And uh, if there's any some anything, something there that I can answer or talk about in one of these videos, I would be glad to do it. So we are going to do our best to avoid this storm. We're sailing a little bit south. And the reason we're avoiding the storm is because of the keg in the crow's nest. If lightning hits that, it's going to be bad for us. So I would say we have a little bit of a double whammy going on. We're on the outskirts of the storm, which we're trying to stay out. And this scurvy dog started to start crying again, which means our boat is filling up with rainwater and the water from the cursed chest. So like I said, make, so like I said, make sure to keep an eye on that. Make sure to <laughs> bucket out your boat if possible so that you don't sink to the cursed chest. And we are going to try to sell our treasure at the outpost. There is a lot to learn in Sea of Thieves, and I know if you're a new player, all of this can feel very overwhelming. That is why I'm trying my very best to kind of take you along the learning experience at a slower pace. So that if you do watch these videos in their entirety, you can kind of see what I'm talking about and uh, understand that this is kind of how Sea of Thieves is. You're going to set off on an adventure, and there's going to be things that kind of take you or detour you off the the kind of what you were planning to do, and that is totally okay. When I first set sail, I wasn't expecting to do a skeleton fort, but here we are. We did one. Now we have all of this treasure. We're in a storm, and we have a keg in our crow's nest. It's not the best, but we're here, and we're going to try to get this stuff sold. Now, one thing I do want to mention is if you are, make sure we get rid of this water down here, just in case anything bad happens. If you're in a storm, your wheel will get affected by, by the waves. However, if you're close to an island, you're going to have some calm water down here and that calm water will make it so that your, your wheel doesn't get too crazy. Um, all right. We were trying to avoid this storm and the storm seems to be chasing us. Welcome to Sea of Thieves. We're even on safer seas. You're still not quite that safe. All right. We're going to try to avoid these rocks. Doesn't look like we can catch any wind. So we're just going to hope for the best here. One thing you definitely do not want to do is stand in a storm with a sword. The reason why is Rare has made it so if you stand out in a storm with a sword, that lightning's attracted to the metal, which makes sense. But you don't you don't want to get hit by lightning. It does hurt, surprisingly. All right, here we are. The outpost is ahead of us. We know this, not because I memorized the map, which I have, but we know this because the map tells us that that's where it is. So if we come back down here, we've highlighted Plunder Outpost and we are approaching. Storm looks to be going that direction and we are heading over here. So we are in business. You're gonna start to learn how each outpost has a dock where you sell things. Um, that's just gonna take time learning the game Plunder outpost, where you want to sell is going to be on the southern part of the outpost, right here on this dock. This is something called Sovereigns. You can only use Sovereigns in the higher seas. Um, so there is a NPC that sits in a tent here that there's harpoons on this tower and you can basically harpoon the treasure off of your boat and sell it at the NPC. And the NPC will take all of the treasure. So it makes selling a little bit more convenient. But that is a feature that's only available in the high seas and if you have a captain boat. But for our purposes, we are going to park our boat here and we're going to sell all of the treasure that we need to. All 
All right, just like anything, as we approach, we're going to line our boat up and then bring up our sails. And we are coming in a little bit fast, but hey, that's what fixing the, fixing the boats for. Gives you a little bit of practice. Now, something that will make selling a little bit easier is if you drop your sails and kind of have your boat over the dock like this, just like this, you can drop your anchor and your boat will make, it'll be very easy for you to jump from your boat to the dock and sell all the treasure. But you do want to make sure that if you do get a hole in that process that you repair it. After you repair the hole, you should get no more holes, so you are good to go. So with that being said, the first thing that we want to sell is that mega keg. Second thing we want to sell is that cursed chest that keeps crying. Gotta get rid of that guy too before he sinks our boat. So all kegs are gonna go to the merchants, which can always be found on the docks. After that, we're going to be selling the the uh, chests to get this out of here so it doesn't sink our boat. All of these go to the gold hoarders, so these can always be found in the tents. Unless you're at your Port Merrick, you're gonna find that big vault is where you're gonna sell that. And then just start selling the treasure. If you're not quite sure where something goes, uh, just take a gander. So this is a crate. This is going to go to the merchant. All skulls are going to go to... Uh, I'll explain gems here in a second. All skulls are going to go to the Order of Souls. Which can be found over here. And then, let's see here. Gems, gems are actually fantastic. Gems can be sold to any trading company. So if there's a trading company and you're trying to level up a little bit faster, uh, you can sell gems to them, which is, which is great. It's really, really nice. Uh, here's that key that we had earlier. It actually opens up this chest, which is neat. You can open this up and find some items in here. Now, this is cool because this is a collector's chest. You can actually use these if you find these. This is an ashen one, but you can also find just a regular looking one. These are fantastic for selling treasure because you can uh, put three items in it and then sell it. In fact, they recently made it so that if you have items in there, you can just walk up to them and sell it to them. Uh, which I don't know why it's not working there, but I digress. Okay, whatever. He tells you it's not working. I guess it's only the regulars. It's fine. It's fine. You can put items in there. Helps you carry the small items, which is really convenient. And yeah, we're just going to sell some treasure. This is what it is. You're going to do this a lot, especially in safer seas. It's going to take you some time to sell treasure, but you are going to kind of get leveled up here pretty quickly which is nice and as you level you're going to want to buy things from more voyages and and all sorts of fun things over there you're going to quickly learn what is the most valuable and what isn't which is always fun as well all right there you go now that we've sold our treasure we can go buy something new there are shops at each of the outposts that you can sell treasure uh that you sell treasure to but there's there's shops at each ones so you can go to the weapons you can go to the clothing um let's see if we can't buy something make ourselves look a little bit more like a pirate i feel like we need the right beard big fan of this beard it's one of my favorites we're gonna buy this beard good maybe buy ooh an eye patch Buy ourselves a fancy schmancy eye patch. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, let's see. What else? Maybe a jacket. Let's see. What is our? What should our pirate wear? Like this. Perfect. See, this is what it's all about. Gold for pants and stuff. Let's see. Uh, this. 
And of course, we need to buy ourselves a tattoo set. Yeah. Perfect. And then, do we want to buy boots? We probably do, right? Good old pair of boots didn't hurt nobody. And a hat. Do we want a hat? We're pirates. Should we get a hat? Eh, you can buy a hat. I like I like no hat. So we're gonna go with no hat. Go to the vanity chest. We're going to put our new beard on. Boom! Look at us. Now we're becoming a real pirate. Put our eye patch on. Yeah, baby. Okay. Uh, clothing chest. We are going to put this jacket on. We're gonna put a shirt on. Put some pants on that we just bought. Okay. Beautiful. It doesn't look, doesn't match at all, but it doesn't matter. Bam. We are ready. Look at us. Boom. There you go. Our first of many guide videos, hopefully. If you like this, I'm serious. If you like this kind of content, this is a new kind of take on guide videos. I wanted to make something a little bit more personal, like a journey. I'm taking you on a journey, holding your hand through safer seas so that you can kind of understand the game, make uh, any questions that you might have, and uh, ask them in the comments below. Or if you wanna jump over to my Twitch stream, you can jump over there live, you can ask them live. I love to answer questions, help people out in this beautiful new game. And if you really like this kind of style, I wanna do more of these. These are really fun. I enjoy kind of doing these. I do sound like a little bit of a crazy person because I'm not talking to anybody right now. I'm just in my office by myself, but that's okay. That's okay. We're pirates. We're out in the seas. We get a little crazy and I've been out there a long time. Um, so that being said, this is going to finish up the first part of the series that we're gonna we're gonna call Hippo TC the guide to take you out onto safer seas part one so if you enjoyed it make sure to let me know and if you have any questions post them in the comments or, or and if you have any questions ask in the comments below and i will see if i can answer them and if i can't i'll maybe cover it in the next video much love and we'll see you out there on the seas or not because you'll be on safer seas either way have fun have an adventure <laughs>